Are these already outdated? We got the release timeline for the next version of Apple Vision Pro. Before we get into the hardware of Apple Vision 2, let's talk about a feature that Apple is working on called SharePlay. Aaron NG on Twitter said, found Apple's plans for Vision Pro multiplayer. Full body spatial personas are mentioned in the docs and even includes an image of it side by side, surround and conversational. And it actually looks really fascinating and interesting. Definitely. And obviously the text kind of already in it, like with the kind of FaceTime AI personas, not AI, you artificially made kind of you kind of not you personas right mm -hmm. seems like it'd be pretty easy just to add a body to that and i think this is probably the kind of missing component that some people who are maybe leery of apple vision are thinking is like oh it seems like such a solitary experience right Definitely. now right and, and this is kind of opening it up and if you look at the kind of leaked information here there's three versions of it you know where one where we can have it on watch something together one where we're talking and there's something on to the side or where we're all focused on a singular thing in front of us. Mm -hmm. Seems like every use case you could possibly want for using it with a group of people. You've been using this thing. Do you feel alone when you're using it? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. And even I've had friends try it and you know, we'll be in the same room and you know, it's very isolating. They, especially with the guest mode, they don't have the eyes showing up on screen and they can be telling me what they're doing. But as soon as they're doing something like Disney Plus or whatever, you actually can't airplay that. So I can't see what they're doing. So yeah, it's, it's very isolating and it makes me want things where we could play a tabletop board game or something like that at the same time. So right now it looks like this shared activity is a part of FaceTime, but it's not actually activated yet fully and no other apps support it. But Apple does have like the code and everything. They're working on this for future apps. Right, and it almost seems like a, a no brainer to add this sort of thing in, right? Because it's such an isolating experience. Like that would be probably one of the reasons you're leery of this, especially if you live in a home where it's you and your wife, you and the kids, you and your husband, whatever, you're just sitting on your couch with this thing on, I could see like everyone hating you immediately, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And that feels like one of the version one type things that they're going to figure out because it's going to have to be something you can connect with other people. But also right now it's, you know, it's $3,500. So for you and your wife to use this, that's seven grand. Yeah. Instead, you could just watch TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like a, a $400 Costco TV is giving you a similar experience. Yes. <laughs> or at least close enough for the difference in price, right? Absolutely. So what is the details for Apple Vision 2, though? I'm curious because, you know, version one is here. It's expensive. People are returning it. So what do we have for Apple Vision 2? <laughs> yeah, I think there's a few interesting things with this. Uh, first, the, the leak kind of timeline is they're saying, oh, about 18 months for the, for the next version. Makes a lot of sense. That's kind of you know, on par with some of Apple's early kind of new product categories. It usually maybe it's not an exact year before the next one comes out, it's a year mm -hmm. and a half, whatever. I can also feel like they maybe uh, don't want to cannibalize sales of this one by having something new too close to the release date. So yeah. 18 months makes a lot of sense. And I think probably more important for Apple is that it gives them enough time to figure out what they need to put in the Gen 2 of this thing. And to the point you just mentioned, supposedly super high return rate happening with this. Not that surprising. New product category. A lot of time people do the, oh, I want to buy it, make my YouTube video and return it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but I think the other thing, if you actually read into the article of what people at the retail level are saying, they're saying the most common reasons being returned is comfort reasons. The phrase that some of the retail people are using is pukers. They're like, oh, pukers are returning it because they get sick when oh, they're wow. using it. I could see that being a huge red flag for Apple. Like, oh, this thing that we envision as the future of interacting with the, you know, cyber world is making people sick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you've been using a while. How do you feel comfort level wise? I feel pretty good. Uh, there's certain things like the other night I did. Uh, there's this meditation app called Trip. That, that I used to use on Quest and now it's on the Apple Vision and it's actually way higher quality and mm -hmm. everything. They actually made it up for the Apple Vision, which is cool. I use that for maybe 30, 40 minutes. And yeah, I was starting to like feel like, okay, there's a thing pressing right here. And I was just using the normal single loop um, band. But yeah, you definitely, you feel and like, oh, wow, my neck is really being pulled forward. But then I'll use it laying down a lot to like watch movies and just have it on the ceiling. And that's kind of nice. Uh, that doesn't really bother me because it's kind of just gravity is already there. <laughs> if gravity's working for you, yeah. it's feeling good. Yeah. But in the use cases they're showing, you're standing, you know? Right. Yeah. Like every Apple video has like, you know, someone standing up in some high end office in San Francisco, just with 40 screens around them and yeah. interacting. It's <laughs> like, oh, like you do that for maybe five minutes and you're like, oh, what am I doing? That's yeah. crazy. And then 
you know, there's other like comfort things that people are having kind of issues with. The timeline on getting the prescription inserts for it seems to mm -hmm. be an issue. And this is a, a, a weird one I was looking at is that the rise of people getting acne with it or just getting like pimples like around where it fits because it's making people sweat. Oh, <laughs> like, and it's, yeah. like, it's like clogging people's pores or something. So mm -hmm. all you need is one kind of prime example to make it an internet story and mm -hmm. turn off a thousand people from buying this thing. Yeah. So I'm sure Apple's pretty concerned with that. Yeah, it said in this article that they are keenly interested in why people are returning the first gen as they go into making this second gen. And that timeline is 18 months, but they say about August of 2025. Some people visualize time differently, so maybe that's helpful. <laughs> but previously, other analysts said there wouldn't be a second gen until like 2027, and that Apple is actually working on a more affordable version to come out sometime in 2025. Mm -hmm. And that version of the story comes from Bloomberg and the information. So I'm very curious about that as well. This could be the pro one that kind of like lives on, and then they make a cheaper one next year, and it is a couple years. But I don't know. I think it's more likely that they fix everything in Gen 1 in 18 months and maybe drop things that they don't need that are making it more expensive right like you think like how like how can the quality of the panel on the inside be lower and no regular person's going to notice mm -hmm. does it need this many sensors to actually operate effectively right like yeah. i'd see them like really looking at that and go oh like we put all the bells and whistles in here maybe we don't need this maybe mm -hmm. we don't need as much battery life maybe you know what it, whatever it is so you can almost argue maybe this version of it is like the everything in the kitchen sink version and they're like we need to make this thing you know 9.99 for people to buy it mm -hmm. how can we lose two grand of tech out of this yeah i think the front panel is something they're going to lose in the cheaper version for sure maybe even in the next version because i don't know it just glows most of the time you're not actually looking and being like wow those those are someone's eyes i feel connected to them it really just feels gimmicky in practice unless they improve it in software it, it seems 100 percent gimmicky in practice and so then i would almost want to turn off to save battery life yeah. right that's like <laughs> oh like cool like you look like you're whatever daft punk cyberpunk dude or mm -hmm. something like it's like not it, I don't think it's very practical. I know I think the eyes almost give it like an uncanny valley vibe because I don't think the eyes look exactly right. Yeah. I like I would rather just a whatever, a blank thing. Or it just literally has text, whether you someone can see you or not. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like this person can see you, this person can't see you, yeah. like whatever, you know. And so yeah, back to the other question about the share play thing. Mm -hmm. What are some apps that you think could be supported there? Any communal activity. I'm thinking gaming, right? That that works really well. I mean, I think the obvious one is, you know, entertainment, watching shows and things like that. But I think there's probably much more interesting things people are going to come up with once Apple kind of opens up the AI and allows Vision Pros to talk to other Vision Pros, mm -hmm. right? Because then you can start getting really interesting things, right? Like it's almost dystopian level stuff where, you know, you're at a meeting or something and it displays someone who they are and what their job is or something, you know, yeah. like all these kind of things that help you like just interact with people a little smoother. Mm -hmm. Kind of like we were talking about a, a more interactive video call experience, right? Like removing mm -hmm. the screen element from it. Imagine you're actually seeing those people in the room with you, a very, you know, hologram, Star Trek level projection kind of thing. But those are the kind of things that I think would actually convince more people to buy this, you yeah. know, it, adding that interactive level to it. Yeah, I think the share play where you're doing something together, and there's actually a good example of this coming from Tilt AR for Settlers of Catan. And they actually call it Catan. So leave a comment. Let me know. Is it Catan or Catan? But um, they have an AR like tabletop game that they're mm -hmm. playing and everyone's wearing these same glasses and it's synced. And it's actually a really cool use case, I think. Obviously, for that group of people to be playing this, that's like 12 or 15 grand. <laughs> this is the today. most expensive uh, <laughs> version of Sellers of Catan ever made. It's like yeah. a 20 grand setup to do it. But, <laughs> but yeah, in a future version where you already have this headset for other reasons and it's much cheaper, um, those are the kind of things that could be really cool and this kind of share play thing could enable. Again, though, I think you run, like to, to your point kind of, right? You run into this thing. It's like, oh, that's neat. But at this price point, it's still very gimmicky. You hear the, the phrase tech bros thrown around when they talk about this kind of in the disparaging way in articles. They're like, oh, the tech bros are returning their Apple vision, right? Yeah. Uh, and the implication being they're guys with the, you know, affluent jobs and money to burn or buying expensive toys, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what Apple needs to break away from to make this thing popular, right? Yeah. And make it more of a egalitarian accessory than, uh, you know, an expensive toy. Yeah, I went to uh, Las Vegas for a gig last week, and I just brought my 13-inch MacBook Pro and then the Apple Vision, mm -hmm. and it was actually pretty great. I was in it's my awesome. hotel room just with a giant screen working, but the one thing I did notice is I exported a video in Final Cut, and then it was super laggy. I don't know if that's 
Apple Vision processing. I don't know if that is my computer's processing. Yeah, who knows, right? It's got to be the, on the, com- the yeah. computer side. Like all of a sudden, it's like it's pulling too much from the uh, mm-hmm. the GPU side of the chip, right? And the, so yeah. it's like can't send stuff to Apple. So now <laughs> I need to get a new, an updated Mac. That's the lesson. <laughs> you need to travel with uh, like a, a full Mac Studio, right? Yeah. <laughs> and just plug that in. Did you use it on the airplane? Uh, I did not. Were you scared? You know, I was like scared, and also it was like a 45-minute flight. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was like, eh. <laughs> You'd be super lame if you pull it out yeah. on a 45-minute flight. Yeah, I'll yeah. do it on a flight to like Europe or something for sure. Yeah, like it is 10-hour flights. Yeah, mm-hmm. It actually probably makes a lot of sense, actually. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. Another thing I think could be 3D design, mm-hmm. because for one person to do that, it's cool. But if multiple people could be looking at the same thing and walking around an object. Yes, that would be super cool. It's good for uh, kind of brainstorming iterations, right? Like, oh, let me show you what I mean by this. And you can like interact with it. Yeah, that'd be super awesome. So all of that could come to Apple Vision version one in software. I'm sure there's a lot that could come in software. But hardware wise, what is something you want to see in version two? Well, this isn't rocket science, right? smaller size, less weight, integrated battery. You know, like, I mean, those are, Mm -hmm. I think that's the the go-to thing. The real thing for hardware I think it needs is cheaper hardware so they can make this thing a thousand dollars less at least, right? Like that that, that $3,500 price tag is out of the range of most people that would want to even try this, right? Like even, Mm -hmm. you know, I bet. I'm I'm pretty well off. I make a good living. I didn't buy one. I was like thirty five hundred dollars. That's that's crazy, man. Like like I buy like you know I can spend that money elsewhere, and it makes a lot more sense to me. Yeah. So those those are my biggest wish list right there. Yeah, I think same and price especially because even the Quest like it's plastic, a lot more plastic. It doesn't feel like an Apple product. Of mm. course, it doesn't have that same feel. But I've worn the Apple Vision for like forty five minutes, and then I switch and put on the Quest, and it's like wow. This thing is light and the battery's in it. Yeah. Make this thing plastic, Apple, right? Yeah. Like 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 the the lighter weight I think makes it feel better than the premium feel in your hand, right? Yeah. I'd rather it feel good on my face, like than yeah. in my hand, right? And yeah, the like you're saying the quest is fairly comfortable to wear, like I mean for pretty long sessions, right? I mean, people mm-hmm. play, you know, a couple hours of a game and then walk away fine, right? Yeah. But ultimately we've talked about how this is probably leading to some sort of Apple glasses. My current theory is it's going to be called Apple Sapphire once they get there. <laughs> but there's a company making similar AR glasses mm-hmm. called Noah AI Glasses. Have you seen these? Yes, I've seen the little demo and similar stuff out there. There's, there's mm-hmm. a few competing kind of things. Well, in the demo videos, they all look amazing, right? <laughs> so yeah. like, it's all like I can make anything look good in a demo because I can fake it all, right? Mm-hmm. This is obviously where Apple wants to go, right? This is where every, everyone sees this is where this is going, right? Like I don't think you need to be some kind of Notre Dame to predict the future here. In 10 years, we all have glasses with displays in them, right? Like that's, yeah. that's happening. When is that tipping point, that hardware going to be to make it good? You look at something like these AR glasses, other things that have been out there. Uh, uh, Meta had a collaboration with Ray-Ban to make mm-hmm. some kind of AR kind of system. Even going back to uh, Google Glass, you know, which is at this point five, six years ago, maybe yeah. longer ago than that, which was, you know, you just had that little screen in the corner. I think the bigger kind of hurdle these all these things are going to have to get over is kind of the as a social thing right because if you remember back when google glass kind of became pop snap glasses another example of, of mm-hmm. this people are like dude are you filming me right now right that was like yeah. constantly people were like hey wait is that are you filming me right now <laughs> right like yeah and so is are people going to be comfortable with people walking around with computers on their faces that are constantly scanning the environment right because otherwise they're kind of useless right like it Mm -hmm. needs to be scanning what's in front of it that i think is going to be the biggest challenge these companies are going to face is the kind of the social faux pas of it all Mm -hmm. and is it going to be acceptable for people to walk around with glasses on their face i think eventually uh, just like once it was considered very rude to pull out your phone and now people do that constantly right so i think it's going to happen the question is how fast so august of 2025 apple vision version 2 let's do it pre-order now